everybody, it's Scarlet Pete, Self-Sufficiency, and you're joining me at The Knitting Machine. It's my Knitting Machine series. I've had an order for another hat. Do you like it? So I thought I'd show you from start to finish how I made this hat. I designed it, and I'm going to show you every step of the way knitting this gorgeous hat for my customer. It started off with her sending me a picture of her favourite cow and asked me to do a copy or a cartoon copy of that and put it on her hat. Let me show you what I did. Just done a little bit of tweaking to the grass at the bottom here because I didn't like how it was. And now I'm ready to send it to the machine. So I'm going to go up on the top here and press the transfer button. Or tab. I'm going to download it to my knitting machine. Take it to the 950i machine. So I'm going to press OK. I've got to go looking for it in more files. That's it. Press OK. There, just that one there at the bottom. My link cable in here. Plug into my computer. Press download and let's go do it. CE 551M1M. The machine's now ready for me, so let's get that ribber pushed up and start knitting. So here's the hat we're knitting. There's the pattern. Here are the colours I've chosen. Move the cable, to, we press the M button, we press in 910M for memory. We're going to hopefully use a transfer carriage, but we could use the double eye transfer uh, tool if we wanted to move the stitches up from the bottom to the top, but I like my transfer carriage. I'm going to use a one prong transfer tool at some point. I've got the two by one comb for pulling out the ribbing. I've got my colours assorted there. I've got the single bed sinker plate. I've got the double bed one attached. Going to connect the ribber. If there's any questions as I go along, put them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer you. 67 stitches each. So I've got my ribber set to P at the moment. I'm going to have a two by one rib set up. We've got two by one on the top, two by one in the bottom, but we've got the second, the two needles in the bottom in the gap. The ribber carriage is going off the coupling for a moment and knitting across and back to the coupling. So I can manoeuvre with my racking handle one to the right. I need to add one more stitch on my left hand side now and take one stitch down on my right hand side. So my needles are on the inside of these stitches and I'm going to hook my yarn over the feeder here at the bottom of the little knob and knit one row across tight. This is the piece I was telling you about. This just tightens up that first row and when we're doing the first row, sometimes you can miss some stitches. And I've got one missed here that hasn't caught, so I'm just going to hook it on. It's back on now. Cast on comb's got the wire in. We're going to pull the wire out, hold the cast on home comb by the middle hole, and push that up underneath, aiming at zero. I'm just going to trap all these stitches with the wire. Push the wire all the way along, push the end down and in. Make sure I've not trapped any of this going to the carriage here by checking the loop. Set it for salvage knitting so that's left slip or partial needle in, excuse the puppies, right one on the ribber in, up. I'm going to set it to zero, zero and knit two rows of circular which is one row in total. One on the bottom row with knitting one on the top. Now I didn't put the weights on for that row because I don't want to stretch those first rows. Now I'm going to put the weights on. For this and that night needle, 67 each side, I'm going to put in three weights on. Now it's time to release from the edge where you've hooked up your yarn. Tension 3-3, three, three. row counter to working position, row counter at zero, and now it's time to knit 40 rows. The first row is tough, and do you know why? Because I've made a mistake. I always forget. I need to turn with the racking handle, one back to the left. There we go. Transfer that end stitch back up on the left hand side that was on the bottom. And now, 
it's time to knit my 40 rows. Check everything's good, nothing's trapped. Check that the comb is not stuck by wobbling and just keep going. After two or three rows, just check each side. Once again, check it's free and nothing's holding where it shouldn't and carry on till I get to 40. I've knitted 23 rows and finding the edge stitches are just telling me they're not happy. This is the point where you get these strange looking seven shaped wires. There are seven shape and there's a hook on the bottom. This is where your extra weight goes. Normally the half sized weight and we're going to hook this in by going underneath the machine and hooking it on the edge stitches and that will just hold down nicely because as we're knitting the weight's not working so effectively underneath and the machine the, the rib is got twisting in like that so I'm going to add another one in on here put it on the side hook it on And that should just keep the edge stitches knitting nicely. Careful as you go across the first side. Check it's all tucked in nicely and it's a happy machine. And carry on. I've got to row 40. Side weights have done their job and I've not had any problems with the edge stitches. For the transfer carriage we need a loose row. So I've done it up 7-7. Seven, seven. I'm going to knit one row. Now it's time to transfer those stitches up. I'm going to use the double eye bodkin tool. And what I will do is put the first one in the hole, the second one next to it. But I'm going to use a transfer carriage. We're on eight like we were, and we were on five. To transfer, we need to wiggle those stitches or stretch them. So we're going to go two rackings to the right, two rackings to the left, back to where we started at five. I'm going to take some of the weight off. So take the wires off. And push up every first stitch of the two sets of needles to transfer over. And if I've got it all set up properly with this bottom lever up, so I'm only taking the top of those two, please excuse the puppies. I'm going to go across now and I should manage to transfer those stitches up. Now I'm just going to look along and check which stitches didn't transfer these ones are so I'm just going to select those ones down out of the way because they are done. Transfer with the transfer carriage we have our pitch lever to H and we have the racking handle set at number four the bed is on number four. I'm just going to transfer up the stitches that didn't work. We're going to shoot across with the transfer carriage only got one that didn't transfer to transfer by hand. Row counter back to zero and we'll drop out of the way by using the side handles on the river. The river. Take off the extra weight. Take off the sinker plate that was for the river by undoing the thumb, thumb screws. Put back on the main one. At this point we do a quick check of the rib to check it's all worked and we've not got any dropped stitches or broken stitches, no loops, the cast on worked, we've got the yarn in ready, it's time to knit. First time thing we do is knit the ploughed field effect. We're at this point now, so I'm going to knit two rows of brown. I've decided to do this at tension seven because she didn't want a huge headed hat. Two rows. Now I need to hand select every second stitch to do fair oil on. Press for fair oil the button. I've got the green I'm going to add in. I'm going to add it in here. And then I'm going to add again, choose my stitches now, the alternative ones. The ones I were, didn't pull out last time are now selected. Just going to wrap around here now an e wrap of those stitches with the end here just so that's knitted in. It's a little tip for you.
just going to wrap again like that now i'm going to knit two rows of green the brown is now finished with so i'm going to throw that one out cancel the fair rail on the carriage switch the machine on kc lever to one i know my pattern set at the right place so i'm going to knit one row across so the white goes in for number one The green goes in for into B feeder and I'm going to knit. Set the carriage for two colours by pressing in the top of those two buttons, the red colour into B feeder. Just going to end wrap that there. There we go. Break the red because the fence is done. I want to have the one cow right in the center of the hat. So first of all, we need a length of the cream to make sure we don't end up with holes on each side of the motive for winding on. We need to set the machine now to stitch motive. So I'm going to flick this up, motive, and I'm going to go, let's see. The pattern number is 910. We now need to select the yellow 32 because that is the width of my pattern and that's where I want it to start on stitch 32. I want it to be on yellow 32 on the one side, green 32 on the other side. We're still on row 21 and when I knit across now I'm going to put my carriage onto KC2. I haven't got two colours in at the moment, so I'm just going to get deselect the second colour. Set for plain knitting, and we're going to knit across until the pattern needles select. Nothing. And now we have the pattern here in the centre. We've got the long length of yarn split in half. We found the centre point, which we're going to put just wrapped onto the centre stitch. We're going to work it this way and this way, and then we're going to use it to end wrap the stitch nearest the carriage. Now we have no ends on the bottom of this yarn to stitch in. Put our second colour in. By putting it to fair isle knit on the carriage and the second colour in the feeder. And because we've got it on KC2 here, it means we've not got an end needle selected. Now we're going to wrap the end needle here, the edge of the pattern. I'm just going to pull slightly so we've got this tightened up. Just going to wrap as well into the work, the beginning of the brown. Wrap the end stitch and knit across. The end edge needle stitch wrapping is always done when knitting um, a, fair, a, a, a motive in Fair Isle. I'm just going to take my brown back again and weave it in as I'm knitting. So by wrapping, I'm take, leaving the one edge knit working needle that's sticking out for Fair Isle and bringing one up from lower working position or working position up. Wrapping by catching the two stitches and putting that patterning, non-patterning stitch back down again. Sometimes we need to add on the extra string spring in the on the antenna to the second colour to, to stop it from um, losing its tension when we come back across the row. Otherwise, it will catch in the needles. So I continue wrapping all the way while I'm knitting this fair isle pattern. I'm going to go quite a length across to the edge stitch. So what I'm actually going to do is wrap again this white or cream yarn in. Wrap it on the edge stitch and knit it across. Wrap the edge. 
Now to stop that being a long float over here, what I'm going to do is just hook that using a latch tool. I'm going to wrap it. If you want to know, learn more about how to reduce the length of your floats, I can do a video on that if you want to put a comment below. Got a long length again now, so I'm just going to hook this across just by catching it in the needles. Oops. Knitting across. Just going to weave that in again. End wrapping again. If there's anything here you want to know more about, just comment below and I can shoot a video on each technique that's interesting to you. There's some long floats appearing here now, aren't there? So I'll show you a way to fix that in a moment. There we go. Not looking good now. Carry on across. Now then, look at all these long threads we've got here, these floats. So what I do, I'm just going to ladder it up from behind. So get a brown throat float and I'm going to catch the white float and just ladder up the whole way. Stitching it as if the river's stitching it, but it's not. Just like that. It just keeps it neat and tidy. And I'm just going to hook it on with a white stitch at the top and carry on wrapping on this side. I've left my cast on comb on for a reason, coming right to the end of the design. No drop stitches so far. Everything going nicely. There we go, we've completed the motif. Take off the brown, leaving a nice length to stitch in. And we've got these end pieces here. What are we going to do with those? Well, I'm just going to thread them in. So I'm going to go every second or third stitch, I'm just going to hook it in, going to the left and to the right in one direction, like that. Knit a row. Right, see where I've done the weaving in of the white? I'm just going to tighten it up a bit on both sides because we've got loops, like that. And I'm going to go back on myself in the opposite direction every second or third stitch weaving it in and the same this way and we'll just have a bit of a wind in with the brown there right so I can now cut off the two ends I wove in like that now I've finished the pattern I'm going to take this to row counter this is the point where I put it ready to put a another rib on the top and I do a few rows of, of the garter stitch here and I also want to gather down the crown. Let me just go about doing that. So I'll do it on every tenth stitch here, two stitches are on. So I'm transferring a stitch over. I'm gathering it here on the machine rather than gathering it when I put it back on. You see what I mean in a minute. Right that's gather that will now put onto waste yarn I can break the length of yarn here the white but I'm going to stitch up with white so I'm going to pull down enough to use on the linker and then break it so that's another end saved rather than just having a pointless little end we've got an end that can be used to stitch up with so that's ready to use later and now all of this is going to go onto waste yarn. Take it off. So far it's looking really good. Now I'm going to turn it around like that. Looking very good, no mistakes. Put it back between, just hook it on the sinker hooks for a moment. Now I have got rid of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches on this side. So I'm going to go two, four, 
six, seven off. On this side, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches. Two, four, six, seven off. And now I'm going to put this back onto the machine, picking up the white stitches and hooking that all back. And the reason I've done that is because A, it's being gathered, uh, decreasing the numbers, because here I have two stitches on this one, see? There's the gather, or the decrease. And B, it's going to give me a pretty nice looking um, garter stitch rose, which will also look good. And the next bit afterwards, it's going to be ready to be transferred down onto the river. And that'll look good too. All the stitches on, time to unravel the waist yarn. There we go. Nothing dropped, nothing split. Now I'm going to hand feed in some blue and to hand feed in, all I'm doing is holding my fingers above and letting the yarn slip through and lifting it to free it from the ball. Three. Oops. Four. I'm doing the two by two. This pulls in the crown nicely. Take off the sinker plate, put on the river sinker plate. We'll put the tension down now down to five and five on the bottom. Five. We're going to use pink yarn. I'm just going to tie these two ends together because this is right at the edge. Pink yarn for the top, which is to signify that cows are there. Here's the pink. I'm going to thread this up. Quick way to thread this up. Break off the second colour that we had here. Tie the two colours together. Below the yarn mast. Take away the colour we're no longer using. Take hold of it here and pull and watch it feed through the new colour. Push the river up. Engage the two. Put the machine ready for working again, knitting. And now I'm going to leave my rib on my river on five over here and the pitch lever on P. Everything's transferred as you can see. I'm glad that job's over. Don't like that. The, I've hung my weights back on and our 5-5, five, five, a 2 by 2 rib for 20 rows. So we're on 113 now at last. The ribbing went well on tensioned our 5-5. Five, five. I've now put the tension to 8-8 eight, eight because I'm going to get ready to use the transfer carriage again. And I need a loose row. Just the first stitch of the twos. Pushed up. For the transfer carriage to collect. We're also going to put it on H, the P lever goes to H. We're going to go two one way, two the other way, and back again, and we're on five. All the needles are now going to go into working position on the top bed, just like that. You see that bottom lever? Flip it up. That means it'll take only the ones we selected. Transfer across. Flip the lever down so it accepts all the stitches from the bottom. Bed it down nicely and just slide across. Now we have all our stitches on the top bed. Drop the river. Inspect the rib. Are we happy with it? Yep, it looks good to me. Change the sinker plates. Put the tension to seven. So we've now completed this section and we're going to knit two rows. Tension dial seven. One, two. Now I want to transfer every second stitch over. I can do that by hand, like this, or I can cheat. Put the lace carriage onto the machine. Going to hand select forwards into upper working position. 
every second needle. The lace carriage is going to transfer over for me every stitch that happens to be out. The lace carriage is set on N for normal, not F for fine, and just go across. Every second needle has now got two stitches on. Yep, definitely. I'm going to throw out of working position and I'm going to hold my hand down here and I'm going to lift up and pull out into upper working or, or holding position all the stitches just to make life easy for the machine to knit that first row for me. Now I'm going to take the tension right down to tension down four and once again with the same reasoning I'm going to help the machine out because it's a thick yarn. It's a second row across and that is the top of the hat finished. That is all the knitting finished. So I'm going to take the weights off the needle, the double eye needle, the bodkin, take a length of pink, break it, take it out of the feeder, da, da, da. thread it through one of the eyes and now I'm going to just hook onto the double eye needle all the stitches as I work along the bed leaving all the needed stitches in my hand on the tool when I've got enough that I can cope with I just pull the yarn through and gather and carry on. It can be a bit fiddly but it's worth doing. It saves you a lot of time. It's sort of both fingers, both hands working to help to take them onto the tool. And then after this we're going to get the hay linker out and I'm going to show you how I stitch up the hat, stitch on the bobble and finish it off. We're right at the end now, having gathered it all on. Last few stitches, being careful not to drop any stitches now right at the end. Let me show you up close how it looks to have all those stitches on the needle and then pulled through. That will gather in beautifully. Should we get the linker now so we can stitch it up? And we've got the length of yarn here to stitch up with. I think that looks really nice. We've got it off the machine now. Just checking it all for any faults before I stitch it up. We're gathering the top there. I'm going to hand graft the top bit here. Having pulled the gather thread nice and tight, I'm now going to secure it by looping it over and over here. Shall we do the pig hat next? If you want that, comment and I'll have to design one while I'm away on my holidays next month. I'm away for a couple of months so the knitting videos will be quiet for a while. And now I'm going to double up my yarn. Look, see, so it's got a tail that's too long. And I'm going to do a secure double, what do I call it, a double stitch here on the top. Do one more, right? And now, I'm going to do two loops which are going to hold the pom-pom on. So there's one. This is how you do it. Yeah, I'm just giving away all my trade secrets in this here video. Yeah. That's the second. Whoops. Now we need to make sure they're both the same length. Like that. I'm going to hook over that end that I want to get rid of and hide it in here. So we just put that over there. And now I'm going to do like a blanket stitch over this. So we go through it, wrap the th thread around the stitch, pinch it, pull it out of the way, and we're stitching around the loop. Two more days and I go get on the aeroplane and I fly back to the UK. I will be available to do, this is a little promotion here, I will be available to do one-to-one -one machine knitting all across Great Britain. If anyone wants to give me a shout, I'm happy to do it. I can fit you in on my travels because I'm traveling all over the UK. 
mainly based in Wales and Midlands. Then I'll be going down south to the New Forest area. I'll be also up near Chester and Manchester. So if you need to have some one-to-one -one lessons, because I need to make some pennies, because, you know, I'm poor, and I need to buy some Onity machines, obviously, but just don't. <laughs> Don't laugh. Don't tell the husband I'll be buying another knitting machine. But that's why I need to make some pennies. So if you need me, give me a comment. If you like my content, Facebook group, which is called Scarlet Pete's Machine Knitting Newbies. And there's a great gang of people over there. They really are nice, aren't they? Yeah, they're lovely. I've met a lot of them. I've made real friends, that proper long-lasting friendships, which is brilliant. There we go. Come and join me over on Machine Knitting Newbies. They do have to put up with my silence every now and then when I go away and I don't have my knitting machines with me. And they even have to put up with me bombarding them with my long knitting lifestyle chats, which I put up on the group every now and then. So we've done the... Can you see that? Is it looking good? Yes. Yeah, every now and then on the weekends I do a no-knit lifestyle so everyone can see what's happening on in my life. Same with cows, making bacon, gardening, whatever else I get up to. Right, now it's time to do the Kitchener stitch or the grafting. I have a video on this, but if you watch closely, you might catch the drift of what we're up to. And we are grafting the sides invisibly, hopefully. But my daughter's always my critic, so she's going to tell you if it's rubbish. Aren't you, dear? Mm, I am very honest. Mm, painfully so. This video has been missing your input, but for, before I was thinking while I was doing this video, I sound ever so boring in this mm. today. I sound awfully down. I need my sidekick, but the sidekick yeah. was doing something. The she sidekick was being told to be shush with the father next to them on the set. Yeah, eat. Daddy was sniffing lots, watching a film, trying not to giggle because he'd got his headphones on. Lily was being quiet, but prior to that, while I started the video off without her, she cooked an amazing dinner didn't you dearest it was delightful indeed oh dear we're I going to bridgerton a... mode yeah of course one can never last long without a vegetarian, into vegetarian, vegetarian moment yeah mm. so i made a delightful meal that took forever to make but it was simply worth it was it didn't take long to down it though did it yeah what was it it was beef it was beef home reared beef yeah Pressure on. cooked rice, which is the best way to cook rice. I was going to say butchered on small holding, just so people know yeah, it was a yeah. home reared, home grown beef cow. And we have a video of it before it was slaughtered. Before he went to sleep forever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was beef chopped up, cooked with onions, seasoned. Yeah. It was frozen. I did a puree. I made concentrated tomatoes to make uh, a puree because tomatoes are one of the world's worst chemically sprayed nasties if you can do it yourself with no spraying and then you can can it or dehydrate it it is rather good mm. now that's the end from earlier so we know we can get rid of that right i do believe i do declare it is time to get the hague link out do you? I do declare this, yes. And how do you know it is declared or not? Because I declare it. Do you yeah. like the little loop? So the loop, everybody, here will hold on. This is my little trademark different thing here, you see. We have a pom-pom. Yes, we it see It comes pom -pom. off for washing because these pom-poms, I don't think, will wash very well. I think that the chain should be cut to the middle link. Well, I think even Given the chain could come off completely clip. and it could just go straight on yes. to the bungee bit. Vote on that in the comments. Should we remove the chain and just have the bungee onto here? I think a smaller piece of metal too because it just doesn't look good in my opinion. Thank you. I do love your honestly ch honest tea child. She's so lovely and kind. That the right way around? What? What, what, what? Oh, okay. I thought it needed turning inside out. <laughs> right, we have an end to finish while we're here. So here you are. Look, you can see, while I threaded in all those ends, that is rather good, I'm going to use a broken needle, or we could use our cast-off tool, to weave in. That looks like a little monkey. Oh, we could do a monkey version. <gasps> yeah. 
I'm sure there's some... a banana hanging off the top. <gasps> oh my goodness. See, we are just too good to And together, maybe North. the monkey's hand going out to grab it. I'm just threading this in, you see. So we're threading the end in, wrapping it in, finding somewhere to stuff it out of the way. Just like this. While the old boy milks the cow for us tonight because we're too lazy to do it. And why is there a reference to a cow? Because we are self-sufficient and this is called the Milk Time Hat. All inspired by our cow, Jasmine. And I hear a clatter of milk outside the uh, milk churn. I can hear it. I sense a cross papa coming in. Do you think he will moment. be rather annoyed? Yes, he told me before he left. Do not forget about the buckets. <laughs> well. And now look. He has to wait around while I clean the buckets. Because you're busy filming, wasting time. Oh, aren't you a yes, terrible Yes, and person. I'm not even getting paid to do this, so I uh, should be shouted at for nothing. Well, one day, one day I'll be rich. I'll make loads of money from my adverts on here. I'll even have my Patreon channel sorted out. It's only got one video on there, and I've got no Patreon so far. Yeah. Which I don't blame them, because there's no content on there at the moment that, that will be. But the videos on the Patreon channel are going to be quite special. They're going to be... Rather in depth. Oh, yeah. Yes, designer patterns given away on there. Oops. And lots of techniques. Right, woman, I chop this off here. I'll go get the Hay Linker in, in camera shot. If you um, go help the old man get the milking churn clean. Mm. Right, so I'm throwing on the work here. I'm going to reverse thread. The Hague linker. So I'm going to spin my dial round to get it right to the edge of my work. And I'm going to thread it in reverse. So that means put my threader through this way, catch it, pull it through, take it through in reverse from above here, pull it all the way through. Trying not to get caught up with the other colours. Back through the spring, through the tension unit at the back, up onto the yarn guide at the top. Throw this over to the side behind us. And I'm going to just continue hooking on all the way, find the red here, match it up with the first red stitch over here, hook it on, and hook going backwards to the first bit here. Remembering that I'm using one line of the stitch so it will look like it's grafted if you do this properly. I have a video on it if you want to go check that. It's also a good idea to wash your hands after getting the work off the machine. I'm just going to twist this so I can see what I'm doing. Because your hands will be oily and you're now going to handle this work far more than when it was on the machine. Now if Lily was here she'd be commenting on this but she's not here. She's just filtering the milk that's been brought in from milking. We get about between 10 and 20 litres a day of milk and we make all our own yogurts and cheeses and butter and ice cream and kefir all sorts of yumminesses but everything has to stop at milking time because we need to deal with the milk right we have two ends here can you see this is where I get lazy or clever or crafty and I'm going to wind them up and down every second of these pins sticking out Whoops. Like that. Then I'm going to go back and wind them on the ones I haven't wound it around. Just like this. Now I'm going to pull my thread to put tension on it and get myself right at the beginning of the work. And if I've been clever, this should just work straight away. We catch the first hook. That can be a little bit difficult, catching the first loop of yarn when we've done it this way. There we go. I've got it caught on the boot inside now. We do will not have on this side now an end of white to stitch up. Right up to the red, 
I'm going to remove the work here. Now where we wrap that purple round and round, can you see? I'm just going to snip it off because that's been finished off. Finished off, as the uh, vegetarian would say over there, but she's busy poking the yeah, fire. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh off. dear, we woke her up. What is this vacuum cleaner doing in my room once again? It's supposed to be vacuuming her room. Yeah, I was too busy making a scrumptious meal. She was. She did make rather a good meal. Now, if you like our stupidity with our Bridgerton voices, tune in to my silly comedy series that we do every now and then, us two ladies doing silly things. Well, one of the last ones was, um, what was it now? There was... Pink girl meets cow in Ugg boots. That was Lily getting all a blonde moment, wasn't it, Lil? Getting all... Yeah. Yeah. Um, then there was also the BMW one where we were driving in the mud without the chauffeur in our Bridgerton voices. Oh, speaking of such, the chauffeur's just entered the building. He's also the milkman, you know, he does all these little odd jobs around the place. Now we have these ends here again. Oh, it's so difficult not to do the Bridgerton voice. Right. I use it because it gives me a wider vocabulary. Yeah, does it? And it makes one more confident speaking, you see. Does it? Right, okay. It we'll take her word reason. for it. We'll take her word for it. It'll just oh, keep her I quiet. I stumble on my word and don't know what to say. Yeah, there's no stumbling today, is there? Yeah, she won't yeah, shut up. Not. Now then, we're going up and down, weaving in. We've got this green over here to weave in. I do believe I've made a small mistake. When I stitched, started the work with the brown, I haven't left a loft to do much of the stitching up with on the linker. But still, live and learn. Next time when you start the work, make sure you leave yourself a long enough end to do the stitching up of the brown welt. And I'm weaving in all these threads here. So all we need to do is just chop them off, chop them off with the scissors. No, darling, I don't think so. Why not? Such fun. Yeah. Right. They don't think we need vegetarian speaking lessons, do we, Jang? Yes, do. So we're now stitching up all the way through there. And Everyone I'm going... Did. What are you doing? Oh, she's moving the vacuum. Yeah. I'm going to weave in the brown and I'm going to stitch up along here. Because I made a mistake, it's going to be stitched up with the white. Okay, turn it back for you to see. I'm going to do halfway, which is there, because this is going to be turned the other way up and stitched in reverse, so that when the people wear the old hat, so. I'm pulling it out. I should be telling you when they pull it, when they wear the old hat, they're not going to um, have a seam in the wrong place when they turn it up. What I'm doing now is pulling out the yarn. I was forgetting to tell you that I was just talking away and doing it. And now, now wait a moment, child. Now I'm going to throw off the bootleg inside the stitch, the loop. Pull off the yarn, her work, and I have a loop. See. I'm just going to pull that loop long. I'm not going to finish it off yet because I might decide to undo that bit. We're going to cut off those ends we've just woven in. All of them. There we go. Just going to look if the white looks fine. It does. I'm all right with that. So I'm going to pull the white through. Cut off the brown that I wove in. Got no ends there to stitch in. Not too many long ends there. Turn it the right way out. The hat is now complete. Now what's left to do is to graft this edge together. And this is going to be turned up. Half of this is turned up, half of it's the other way around. So now, that's why I did not continue stitching it together. Because this needs to be grafted, so this is now the right side. Oops, a daisy. Now 
That's the show for come milkman rummaging in the background. We've got to upload the um, plastering of the mud, the complete, no I haven't. The mud plaster, the lime paint making, and the transformation of the child, no, oops, sorry, the camera lady's bedroom. It does look rather good because it was quite a hobble before. Wasn't it, dearest? It was quite a what? A hobble. Hobble? Not fit for a lady like yourself. Yeah. Nor a camera lady. Absolutely not. It's been long in the waiting of a decoration, I believe. Yes. We do live in a rammed earth house that's made from mud. Hello. Oh, there she is, look. <laughs> and um, it's adobe is the posh word. Adobe? Adobe bricks, I mud, earth rammed, words. earth rammed. So, oh, I've unthreaded my needle, all this gossiping. So we have to use special old fashioned uh, methods to build the house back and renovate it. Methods which will allow the house to breathe, such as lime paint. Uh, using pigments for coloration, which I found today where we buy the pigments from in the local shop. And uh, mud rendered with secret ingredients. Did you like the secret ingredient, Lily? Mm. Are you going to tell everybody what the secret... Well, actually, it's very themed with this video. The it secret was ingredient dumb. was donated by the house cow. The super glue that holds the mortar together was... What was it, Lily? Can you come down here at eye level and tell everybody? It was dung. Dung is smeared across my bedroom walls. But, it, but it why? Lo it looks so good. Nobody can tell it's there. Um, so watch out. You take a deep breath. No, <gasps> no, you can't smell it. She's absolutely fibbing. You cannot smell it. It is as fresh as a daisy's bottom. So do drop in. Give us a comment if you're going to go and have a look at the, uh, the transformation of the camera lady's bedroom with the secret ingredient from the cow give me a comment below and then i'll know if anyone's interesting and i'll just get on and upload it quickly right finishing off again the camera lady is now gone quiet in her bedroom tidying the chauffeur has now turned into the wood chopper and bringing in logs for the night to keep us warm overnight yes dearest there you go that's finished You want to choose the bobble? Yes. You go get the bobble bag, it's on the floor yeah, over there. It's such fun! We have a choice of colours to match the hat. How about if we put a snowman on top? It would look ever so quaint, would it not? No, we're not. Little putting... wiggly waggly snowman. That's another video if you want to go and have a look how to make your very own snowman for Christmas. You know, you could be starting now and you could have 150 of them done for next year. We have the hat. I'm having a bad hair day, so you're not seeing my face today, and that's that. Can we see the pom-pom possibilities? We don't have enough pom-poms. Well, show the bag of pom-poms. I think we might have to go out and buy some pom-poms. We uh, have we... white, which has a little pussy cat on. No, that's for a cat-themed hat we're doing. We have a pink heart, which well, is That goes with the pink udder, yes. It does not match. Right, we've got red color. that goes with... I think that might be the best option. Yeah, I don't think so. I like the brown. Try the brown. The brown looks best. Doesn't quite go. I think flipping does quite go. You don't say flipping. Right, so we hook, the, hook him on. <laughs> we'll get rid of this extra piece in a moment. Let's get rid of that bit, look, see. We're going to take off this loop here. Take it off like that. Yeah, just like that. Right and now easy. we have a pom-pom on oh, like a chain that. a hooked on like that which can be hooked off for foot washing right now then we get a model how do i yeah it's actually quite nice i like it look at that so please comment below can you stop fiddling with the pom-pom and just uh, show the front what end? nerve is it for if not to fiddle with get your head just down here so everyone can see it there we go. I'm going to come up here and show everybody the hat. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Like, subscribe, share, and give me a comment so we know you're there. Say bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Lots of love. Mm -hmm. Join us on Machine Knitting Newbies on Facebook.